What's good, everybody? Hey, check this out. Listen, we're making a peach cobbler, right? You didn't see me make this several times, but I'm gonna give you guys two different ingredients you can substitute or add on, and it's gonna be fire. So this is what we're making. Let's get it. All right, so listen, peach cobbler, right? I'm gonna go ahead and explain something to you. Obviously, I got these two peaches right here, right? Listen, if you guys wanna, you know, use fresh peaches, you can. What you need to do is, I'm gonna put a link up at the top. You guys click on that and you can see how I did it. But to give it to you in a nutshell, just take a fresh, you know, fresh peaches, boil them. When they get a little bit soft, then you can peel this off, you know, sort of easy, right? Now, I'm gonna be using, you know, a pie crust from Pillsbury Doughboy. Uh, this is my thinking. Listen, I like great tasting food that, you know, that's easy to make and quick to make. Now, I can go ahead and uh, make pie crust from scratch. You know what I mean? It has obviously a little bit more time, a lot more effort, you know, stuff like that, right? But this right here is the way to go. And it doesn't sacrifice anything, I promise you. Now, if you look over here and listen, like these are my cans, right? So normally I use four. So when you guys go to my website, which is smoking and grilling with ab.com, and that's W-I-T-A-B.com, the recipe gonna call for four of these, right? Now, because I'm using a 10, look at my you know my pan here is sort of deep, so I add two more to this, right? If I add the two more to this, that'll uh, give me a little bit more filling, it raises it up. Listen, you want to stretch it because this, this don't last long, I promise you. So don't, you want to pull this out like at the end. Just tell everybody you got the dessert to go along with everything, right? And then you see the rest of the ingredients, right? I just told you guys the uh, website. Go there, check it out. And don't forget, look around. You know what I mean? I got all kind of recipes for this holiday coming up. And this peach cobbler is the one that kills it, folks. Okay, so look, after you guys did a little flyover, you got a chance to see some of the ingredients. Don't forget, they all on my website. It's printable and screenshotable, right? You want to go ahead and preheat your oven. So bake 350 and then start. Now, the number one thing everybody says about when it comes to uh, peach cobblers, they say they don't like to have a soggy bottom. I'm going to be honest with you, the definition of a uh, true peach cobbler, there is no bottom crust, right? You put the dough and everything on the top and you cook it along with your filling, right? So in actuality, we call this peach cobbler, but what we're making is a peach pie. You know what I mean? Uh, just being real with you guys, giving you guys some information so you know that's the difference. Peach pie has a bottom crust, right? But we all have been grown up, have been taught as we've grown up to so call it peach cobbler, right? Remember, peach cobbler, no bottom. Everything is on the top. Now, with that being said, since we're gonna be using this, I'm gonna go ahead and take some non-stick spray. Just spray the bottom of this, right? So the number one thing that I hear people say is, oh, I don't really like my bottom to be soggy. Uh, to be honest with you, when you put the hot filling in there, it kind of like cooks it anyway. So it's the definition of what people call soggy. You know what I mean? Uh, I like mine either way, but I'm gonna show you guys what you can do. So what I'm gonna do is open these two. Let me go ahead and make some room. Again, the Pillsbury is my tool of choice, right? You get two pie crusts in here. Right, they perfect. So if you're using a full pan, like you see right here, you're gonna need to put two of these down at the bottom. Right, so I'm gonna just take it and put it just like that. You guys can stretch it as far as you would like for it to go. But for me, I'm gonna just take it like this, right? And this is the like, this the easy part about it. And look at the flow. You just pull your ingredients, measure out a few things. You know what I mean? Uh, and then just go ahead and drop this in just like you see, right? Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of my nutmeg. You know what I mean? Just put just a little bit down like this. Right? Not much. Now for my cinnamon, this will give you them holiday vibes. This mixture here, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and get me a little bit of this sugar. This is the white sugar, you know what I mean? And we do it like that. Right? Now, remember my spray? My non-stick, I just give it a little, that's it, just to help it brown just a little bit. Now I'm waiting for my oven to you know, get up to temp, and then we move on to the next. Now, you guys see these ingredients right here? I'm looking right here, what's missing? That's that brown sugar. So let me go ahead and bring that out. I'm still waiting for this to get uh, to 350 degrees, and now we are getting ready to start working with our filling. All right, so I got my brown sugar, my white sugar. I wanna show you guys something. I need to buy more of these. This will make your life so much easier. So let's just say you're storing your brown sugar, your white sugar, or anything, you know, of that nature, like especially when it comes to the sugar. You know, it can dry out, right? So listen, I got myself one of these, this little teddy bear. I got to find a name of it. I'll put it down in the uh, description box, you know what I mean? And maybe pin it in the number one comment, right? So you guys can see. Get yourself one of these. You soak this in water. 
right? It gets nice, it absorbs all of that. And then when you put it in there, it keeps all of your uh, sugars moist. You know what I mean? So you don't have none of the, that stuff, uh, you know, getting hard and you get them little, you know, the rocks, right? Now, that's just like a little pro tip. Now, what I want to show you is I already put some fire underneath the bottom of this. Now I'm getting ready to add my cans in, right? Right, so it's already on its way getting hot. Remember, I'm using six cans for this. That's an option. And then for those of you guys that are watching how much sugar you, you know, your sugar intake, you can actually use these light, the light version. And I want you guys to take heed. Listen, I'm not draining nothing. You know what I mean? We want to put that in there. And I got it. It makes it a little bit runny. But I promise you, when I thicken this up, all oh, y'all, stay for that, folks. All right, so my oven just preheated, right? So we put our pie crust right here. We got that going. I'm going to go ahead and add this in. Hurry up and close it so I can keep my heat. Now, I'm gonna set a timer for about 10 minutes, right? I'm gonna keep watching it. What I wanna do is, I just wanna go ahead and get that, uh, you know, baked a little bit uh, more so on the crispy side, right? So we're gonna put a little color on it. We already put the cinnamon, nutmeg, a little sprinkle of sugar. Trust me, folks, this is gonna be fire. And I got y'all covered for that, like to have that, that bottom crust that's, uh, that's cooked. For sure, it won't be soggy. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put a tablespoon of this in here. You guys do what you like. I have this tailor made for the way that I like to make it. You know what I mean? I give everybody the recipe to put you in a ballpark, right? So this here is my cinnamon, my nutmeg, my vanilla extract. Now I wanna show you guys this right here. Look, this is vanilla extract, this is almond extract. If you guys want like a little bit of a nuttier taste to it, you wanna use the almond. But you know, this right here is for somebody and they specifically wanted the vanilla. I just told them there's two options and they don't even know. I was telling them from the gate, sometimes I use vanilla, sometimes I use, you know, almond. But either one, that works, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and give it a stir real fast. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see, but it's starting to kick up a little heat vapor. You see that right there? That little steam is coming up off of it. It's on its way to, you know, boiling, right? You want to get this nice and hot. Why? Because we got to add this sugar to it, right? Now, I'm going to add my sugar to it. And I want to show you. You got to see it like that. But look, it's soft. See how I can just do that? It's not hard or nothing like that. It just appears to be that way. So, I'm going to add some here. And remember, we went with six cans. So, this is just me making like a little bit of an adjustment. Now, don't trip. When I first made this, I made it with one cup of brown and one cup of sh uh, white. You know what I mean? Now, I have reduced it all the way down. You know, it, it still tastes good. I reduced it all the way down to a uh, to a half a cup. You know what I mean? Which is cool. You know what I mean? You guys do what you think is great for yourself. But what I found out, like on the internet, a lot of people look at things and they, they cook and eat and taste and everything with their head you know, with a mind instead of uh, just trying it. You know what I mean? So three quarter cup is great, all the way down to a half a cup, right? And because I added two extra cans, you know what I mean? Uh, just for a little bit more filling, that's why I add just a little bit more, you know, sugar to it. Next, I add my butter. Nothing like that buttery flavor, right? All right, so here's a level up, folks. So summertime, you know what I mean? I think it like coming off of the spring, I like for things to be a little fresh. You know, I like that refreshing taste, right? So listen, I'm gonna take this lemon right here and we gonna get us a little zest on it, right? You guys can see it right here on the back. Now listen, when you zest, you wanna make sure that you don't get any, you know, like sometimes, look, I was doing it wrong, folks. I wanna say I was taught the wrong way, but nah, my granny can't be wrong. That's gotta all be me. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. But when you zest, you don't want to go to the white part. That's where it gets bitter, right? We want that refreshing, lemony taste to it. You know what I mean? And not too much, folks. Watch how much I put in here. You know? You don't need a whole lot. Right? And then with this heat, you know what I mean? It cooks down. You won't taste it. You won't have any issues, you know, seeing it got pulp in or nothing like that. So... I'm going to just say, really, it's like just adding a teaspoon of that real. All right, so look, this is where the magic come from. I don't know. Let me see. Let me see if I can catch this piece of butter. This was the butter. Well, it's gone now. You see that right there? That's the last of the butter. So we got this right here. Nice. Right? Now, we got a whole lot of sweetness in here. Now what I'm going to do is just add a small pinch of salt here. Right? Just a, uh, that's it. Right? Then, right, let's give this a stir. Now, 
number one thing you guys are thinking like, man, that, that right there looks a little soupy, right? So you can look at it. It does sticking up, you know what I mean? Once it cools down, I think it's up just a little bit, but nothing like what we used to, not the way Granny used to do it, right? So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, right? Now look, over here, I got my cornstarch. This is gonna be real simple. It, it's equal parts, right? So, so if I put three of these in, what? We put three parts of equal water, right? So, but listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've been doing this so long, I don't really measure it, but for you guys, I just say measure it. You won't have no, no, you won't fail, nothing like that. So what I do is I look for my thickness, right? So let me go ahead and get myself a spoon. You guys come on over here. I'm gonna take it. I'm just gonna add just a little bit of water. Oh, let me do this. Cause I got my soapy water here. I ran hot water. So I want to make sure my water's cold, All right? So I feel it cooling. There you go. So it's cornstarch. I don't care how much, cornstarch you put in there, it's equal parts of the uh, cold water, right? So you take it. I can just look at this and do it like that. This is one of them things when I say, do as I say, not as I do. My pie crust is the way I like it. You know what I mean? Uh, and I'll show you in just one second. There you go, right? So now we won't have those issues, right? Now listen, we are gonna add some hot filling to it. We'll soften it up just a little bit, but then it's gonna come back. So ultimately, when you take this out, you guys are gonna tell me how you like that bottom crust. I'll see you guys when y'all come back and y'all tell me like, hey, that was fire, bro. Okay, so look, I never really said the name of what this is. Look, this is called a, a cornstarch slurry, right? This is your slurry, which is cornstarch, whatever, however much you put cornstarch, you equal that, you know, with the uh, with cold water. Right, so we got that going. Now I want you guys to take a look at that. Now we got it nice and hot. Now I'm gonna show you something. When I drop this in here, nice and hot, this slurry, watch how it thickens up. I'm not gonna stir it right away. I just want you guys to just see the magic and how it works. So you can start to see it thicken up immediately. What we wanna do is make sure this is completely, you know, mixed up, you know, thoroughly. And then look at the liquid now. See how I, even if I'm moving it fast, and the longer I cook this under this heat, it just gets thicker and thicker. Now, if you want to know what it's like, you see that right there? That's some of the, you know, cornstarch slurry right there. But we're just going to keep working this back and forth to get it all to dissolve, right? And the only reason they did that is because I wasn't stirring when I put it in there. The proper way is once you add your slurry, you should be stirring it also. But I did that because I wanted you guys just to see, you know? So look. All right. So now, only thing left to do is we want to take this and pour this right over the top, All right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put it down. You want to do this where it's best, you know, comfortable and easy for yourself, right? So let's see, let's do it this way. All right, so I'll go this way and I'll just pour. So now you want to open up your next pack. Now the thing is, you get two of them in there. I usually use two, listen to this, I use two on a half pan, right? So I just, you could give it a little bit of stretch. If you guys got a rolling pan, a rolling pan, you can go ahead and, you know, open it up that way. But this right here, you know what? I'm gonna use another pack, only because I'm using a full, right? So we have it like this. Now this part right here gonna be cool. If you got a pizza cutter, great. If you don't, really, just get yourself a, uh, a butter knife. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and make a straight line down this way, just like that, right? Now, it depends on how thick you want these to be. I'm gonna probably go about this thickness right here. They're not gonna all be straight, you know what I mean? Some are gonna be wider than the others, you know what I mean? But only people care about is it gonna be flaky, <laughs> you know what I mean? And is it gonna be good, right? So I take it like this. And then I just take them like this, and I just put them right across here. Now, I'm not gonna do a lattice. It's gonna look like a lattice, but I'm not finna weave it in here. So in actuality, this is a lattice top. You know what I mean? But I'm just not gonna weave it. And I'm gonna show you why when I put this together, right? So look at this here. So after you have them all one way, whichever way you go, that's fine. Now watch what I do right here. I lay these over the top, right? So I'm gonna keep doing that and then I'm gonna add one over here like this, right? And we're just gonna keep doing that until we run out of the longer pieces. 
All right, so this is what you get. It doesn't make a difference. I mean, I got it. If you're a perfectionist, then you might want to like make your own or you can roll the actual dough out to make it flatter and thinner. You know what I mean? To get it to be longer. But look at that right there. Just when you glance at that, you know you don't see it ain't no issue. So now you want to do it. You want to melt your butter and you want to brush your butter on, you know, on all of the strips, right? Now I'm going to take my cinnamon and just give it a little dusting on the top. And then after the cinnamon, I take some white sugar and I just sprinkle a little bit of this on the top. Just gives it that bite. Just trust me, folks. I don't know if y'all can hear it in my voice right here. This always gets me going. If I haven't made 500 of these pies in my life, I'm lying. You know what I mean? Uh, listen, I'm telling you, I made these. And this is my go-to. Need to slow down on eating them. You know what I mean? Because when I can't find nothing sweet to eat at night, I'll always keep these ingredients always in my pantry. Always. And I got pie crust stacked up outside. Of, you know, I, hey, they freeze too, folks. So this is what we got. We at 350. We're going to put this in there until we brown this top. So I'm going to say you're going to go in about 45 minutes. Folks. All right, folks. So listen, it's been actually 55 minutes. I usually put it in there for an hour anyway, but I said 45 minutes so you guys can take a look at it. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, but I'm gonna give you some eye candy. You can see it. Oh man, this I can't say enough about it. Here we go, folks. So that's it right there, folks. Now listen, I'm gonna let it cool. And listen, we've been blessed enough for I gotta make four more of these. They wanted five full pans, right? And they wanted to make sure my pan was deep. So they'll take this one and they gave us the luxury, you know, gave us the okay to go ahead and slice this, you know, so I'm gonna let it cool. I'm finna prepare the other ones. I got two more to prepare and then I'm gonna start putting these in these ovens. But once it cool, I'm gonna show you something. All right, so listen, I let this cool for about 30 minutes, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead, let me just see, where do I wanna do it? You know what I mean? Cause this is for somebody, so and I got it. So I'm gonna just do this right here. There's nothing like having peach cobbler in your house. All right, so take it here. I'm trying to get it underneath it. You know what I mean? We want to get some of that. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I'll just set it right there. The only thing missing is a scoop of that ice cream, right? And don't trip, folks. I got that too. All right, so you guys see it. You know what I mean? Uh, Man, I'm just gonna get right into it. It's still warm, you know what I mean? Uh, nice and thick, not runny. I don't wanna like drop this down, but you can just see this is like the perfect perfect consistency that you wanna have when you have peach cobbler, right? So listen, I'm not finna over talk it. Cheers, y'all. Mm. Fire, folks. Listen, I'm not gatekeeping no information. This is the recipe that you guys came to get when I had the restaurant, and this is the one you guys gonna be coming to get, you know, throughout. So listen, if you need something to level up your party or your backyard function for this holiday, mm, this is it right here. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me just take the time to say, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and tell everybody out there, there's a channel out here to simplifying these recipes and taking a mystery out of cooking. I can't control myself, I'm ready to eat, folks. I'm out, peace. Thank you.